Okay. Okay. So, remember we came down like this, came out, came around like this, we're coming in, coming down, coming out, coming in and around. Okay, what does this look like? These arrows are connecting here and they're leaving there. Okay. I'm going to need my assistance again. It's the hard one. Okay. It is making an egg beater. Okay, we see this? It is a vortex. Now, what does a vortex do? It takes matter and it demolecularizes it, whips it around, and brings it out now at the bottom. In at the top, out at the bottom. Did everybody see that? Yeah. Okay. And that's exactly, thank you very much. That's exactly what is going on here. It's taking in at the top, out at the bottom, in a vortex. Okay? In and out, comes around again, feeds itself to renew it. And that's how time moves. This is the expanding southern half of the universe. Let's look at it on another chart. This chart gets saved for one second. It's almost going to go. But it gets saved. Because I don't ever remember to make this point. It has to do with the vortex again. I'm glad you're going to see it. Here is the number two. You see how the number two is a perfect mirror of the number five? Do we all agree with that? Mm -hmm. Okay. But they're inverted. One's upside down. This point right here is inverted. This is the inversion point. This is where everything gets flip-flop. See how the number two is over here and the number five is over here? Okay. This is co God's cosmic grinder. Okay. The cosmic grinder. Every black hole feeds a white hole. Okay. Every and the two and five are opposites. Now, the ancients knew this. They knew the symbol. They knew everything. But they didn't share it with the generality of man mankind. Or mankind just couldn't learn it. I don't know what the problem was. Okay. But they left us a clue anyway. Now, a lot of people say, hey, this is artificial. What are you talking about? The shape of the symbol having anything to do with the actual function and shape. But you know doubling was how we were going that way. And you know halving was the other way. And it's not by accident they stuck the five all the way down over here to be a mirror of the two, and that, that comes from them both connecting to the one where they connect. It's not an accident. Oh, and then so the eight, the other third part in there is the two well, things filled in. Overlap. Yeah. So this is where the, whole, the swastika thing came in the four corners. I would think so. Oh, I said, well, when you combine the five and the two, uh, they Together form an eight to two. Uh, like this? Like, like, like this? It's a digital. It's a digital eight. Oh, when you combine the symbols for it. Right. The oh, symbols yeah, right. Five and two. Oh, I see what you said. When you overlap. It's a swastika, the spiral. Oh, I didn't see that circuit right mm -hmm. there. Yeah. I was thinking of, of when you go in half, you get 0.5. Yeah. Is, that, is that how they're connected to yeah. Everything's connected. Then, yeah, that's the. He just said it. <laughs> but there's. Okay. Say it one more time. Everything's connected. Yeah. But the the whole secret of that information was kept very secret. I mean, when you go back and you look at bits. It's pretty now scary. That I've seen things. Are you, that wait a minute. Are you into conspiracy? <laughs> yeah, but I've seen. You know what I mean. I've read yeah. things and seen little pieces of this. And it was a deep secret and a well-kept secret, but the swastika, I mean, their symbols came out, but they didn't understand the significance of the eternal, the eternal life of the swastika. Well, there's two. There's that the reverse swastika, which me. means, yeah. yeah. There's two shapes. Yeah. It just looks backwards. They've been found in every continent, I think, the symbol. Well, we're dealing with mysticism, and actually, that's my favorite topic, is showing how it relates to archaeology and mystic symbols, and that's my favorite topic. But I'm about to 
saturate you guys with a little bit of that stuff anyway. So, um, so you asked for it by bringing up that stuff. But, um, but the point here is, is that they are reciprocals. They always make one, and it has a use. Everything we're seeing here has a use, and the use is this. Okay, the use is 1 times 1 is 1, 2 times 5 is 10, which equals 1. So I go away from 1, 1, 2, which is a 4, and backwards, 1, 2, which is a 7, and 4 times 7 is 28, which is 10, which is a 1. Do you follow that? Do it again. No. Okay. I have to just see, I, it's weird because I'm going very long this way and very you short this way. You're going to adjacent nodes from the center. Exactly, from the one. Okay, so I'm using the one. I'm not on the nine right now, I'm on the one. We learned about polar relationships, which is by the nine. But now we're going to learn reciprocal relationships. The polar is different from the reciprocal. The reason I have the answer to everything is because I'm combining every principle that exists into one ball of yarn. So right now we're going to work not on the polar aspect, but we're going to work on the reciprocal. Reciprocals always equal their beginning point. Okay? One's the beginning. So 2 and 5 is the next distance, and 2 times 5 is 10 equals 1. Okay, and so now I'm going to go four, 1, 2, which is the 4, two, 2 lines away. Bear in mind that every one of these lines, the ratio of this line to this line to this line, is your golden, it's all your means you could ever, everything you want to know. But you're starting with 2 and you're looking at 1 and 4 in relationship to No, that. I'm not going to do that yet. Oh. I'm only counting, I'm going to take, I'm going to start with 1, I must end up on 1. And this must be a 1, 2, because if this is a 1, I want 1 times 1 is 1. Watch. Okay. I'm going to just do it. Okay. 1 times 1 equals 1, because this is really 1 over 1. Right. Okay. So I go over here, and because I have two parts now, I don't have to multiply 2 times 2, and well, 2 times 2 is 4, I've never done this before. 2 times 2 is 4, and 5 times 5 is 7. Is seven. And 4 times 7 is 28, is 10 is 1. Good. Yeah, it still worked anyway. Okay, it's okay. I just thought I, I like to do new things when I can find the things to do. Cause, uh, okay, so 4 times 7, which is now 2 away from 1, 1, 2, 1, 2 equals 28, which is 10, which is 1. And then I go 1, 2, 3, I end up here this way. And I go backwards, 1, 2, 3, this way. So I go 8 times 8 is 64, is 10 is 1. Always equals 1. And I found that this shape always makes the demarcation line. It's called a shear. It's called a... Um, it's real important for modeling electricity. But I won't, I won't go on to it further on the chart because you'll see it elsewhere. But since Charlie brought up one other thing, let's do a 2 now. 2 times 2 is 4. Okay, so I go this way. 1 times 4 is 4. Then I've got to go like this. 8 times... 5 is 40, which is 4, and sometimes 7 is 49, which is 4. Yeah. It's always going to be a shear, and consistent. And one time, one you're moving backwards, 1, or moving yeah. forward 1, and then the next time you're moving backwards, 2, right. forward 2. Yeah. Now, 4 times 4 is 16, which is 7. So I go this way, and I go, what is it? Uh, 2 times 8 is 16, which is 7. And then 1 times 7 is 7, and 5 times 5 is 25, which is, is 7. Is Hmm? That's fractal. This whole thing's a fractal. I have a chart in here that not only, that I don't have to say one word that is so beautiful, well, it's actually behind this board that you're so going to get to see. So that squared plus whatever you have. Oh, that's so cool. <laughs> Except that this whole thing, doesn't it also have its own mirror image behind it? Yeah, but, but... And but it has no I'm listening to there is no but. Yes, it has a mirror image, no. but there's certain laws or certain rules. We just have to understand what those are. You're mm -hmm. you're already qualified now. You understand enough that you can tell me what that mirror image is and how that mirror image works. That's what we're trying to go after. Is what is that mirror? What's its polarity? What's its number? What's its location? Based on up, down, right, and left, front and back. We'll well, get to other, it. It's other worlds, I would think. Other, now, other places that we can. Uh -uh. To get to? To go huh? To no? They're here. Well, that's what I mean, they're here, but in another frame of mind, like in another, another 
type of um, not a physical no, plane. It's, it's all interrelated. Most of it. The only thing that's not a physical plane is the three nine sixes. It gets easy. We'll keep working on it. It's a little bit hard right now because I started you from a coil as opposed to the map. But we'll see. Okay. I wasn't going to pull out this chart. I wasn't going to go into this, but I decided to do it now. Anyway, for the sake of thoroughness. Okay, we ready? What? Oh, no. Okay, it's top quiz. Now, this, is, this method of teaching is called, is called programming. We are programming you. If we, you will have 12 more hours of this. What's my place in all of this? <laughs> what would your place, what, what, what is your place in everything normally? I'm supposed to tell other people about it. <laughs> right, so you're a teacher. That's right. Oh, is that it? He says, go join. He says, go out and join them. There's a tablet. By Baha'u'llah. I know, a real beautiful tablet. Rejoin those and tell them, you know, the message. Here we go. One, two, four, eight, sixteen. It's a very primitive chart. The binary code is a six-number digit repeating pattern in the decimal system, 124875. This is considered the binary code. This is computer switching. They call it on and off. But I've already said zero is not the member of any multiplication series. Okay? Zero and one cannot be the computers of the future. It just doesn't work. That's why they're so slow and obsolete. Okay? And this toroid system is the supercomputer. But I'm just showing one point, which is the score. Content versus quality. If we have one point here, what is its quant content? One. So there's your quality to the right and content to the left. Got it? Now we have two. Two points here. What's their content? Two. Does everyone understand that? No. What's their quantity? Two. Okay. And what's their content? A five. Now we have... That's what a reciprocal is. Okay. Now we have four. One, two, three, four. And what's their content? 0.25, which equals a seven. Oh, okay. Right. Oh, I see. Wait a minute. Okay. It's not 0.5 and 0.5, because we're only looking at each one. There's four, one of these. Right. Okay, and each one of those four represent 0.125. No, they represent 0.25 if you're looking at the top. So one, two, three, four. It is a pyramid. It is. I'm showing you that the binary system is a pyramid, but it's a pyramid that is not binary. So the, on the right, is if anything, it's on the right is the branch number, and on the left is the uh, yeah the, uh, um, the, the value of of uh, yeah of the, of the function. So you need a little contraption um, that makes a little zippy that is designed off of the holy name vibration? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> One, five, seven, eight, four, two. That's all harmonics. That's all it is. Resonance. It's like an antipode. Well, you can hear electricity when you're walking down the street on the pole. Zapping has a rate and a frequency. Well, All right, so they're doubling circuits in reverse directions. So these doubling circuits, again, are significant. Okay, that's all I was pointing out. Okay. They went that chart. All right. I showed the vortex in, out. Last but least point, which is not going to be... I showed the 2 and 5 is not accident. As long as we're on these charts, oh, I'm showing the vortex action. I'm showing how it moves in a vortex. I'm showing infinity. It's just a cosmic grinder. Okay. I sh I'm showing the music scale. Classic musical scale is the doubling circuits too. From C to C to C is one, 
128, which is 11, which is 2, 256, 13, 4, 5, 12 is 8. It's the same thing. Your doubling circuits.